If you're watching this video, it's because you're the happy owner of a bunch of news tickers or cr uh, title crawls from Video Revealed. And if you haven't purchased them yet, you can do that from the videorevealed.com slash shop store. So just go to Video Revealed and you can buy them there and install them. They work in Premiere Pro and they were created completely with Premiere Pro graphics. And what that means is, you don't have to have After Effects installed. They won't use Dynamic Link. You don't have to have external Illustrator or PNG files that you have to find and move. Every single title was created with the tools inside Premiere Pro, including the pen tool. There's no dependency outside, and that makes them fast, easy to use. And they're scalable to any frame size because it's all vector, baby. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is uh, extract the zip file. So if you've downloaded that from the store, it's a .zip file. We extract that. And there's two ways that we can put them into Premiere Pro. You can drag and drop them right into the essential graphics, or you can point it to a folder. I like the folder thing because it's easier to go back to them. You could also add them to a library, and I've got a whole tutorial about libraries. So let's extract it and point to a folder. So here it is. Uh, on the Mac, you just double click and it will extract. On Windows, I'll choose Extract All, click Extract. And there they are. Open that up and you can see there there's 30 of them in here, all named with the style that they are. So there's some simple ones. There's some lower thirds that I actually added a bit more of a title, not just a, a, a ticker or a crawl. And then there's a bunch of stylistic ones that I, I created for specific uses. So this is the location of where that folder is. I'm going to copy that just to make it easier. Back in Premiere Pro, go to my graphics workspace. And in the Essential Graphics panel menu, you can manage additional folders. If you don't see this, it's because you're not running the most current version of Premiere Pro. Make sure you update and then you can do this. You can always just drag and drop these. Okay, so I'll click Add. And I will go to the same place. Select that folder. There it is. Click OK. And now when I go to local folders, there it is, and there's the tickers. So there they are. All you have to do is drag them to the timeline. They will show up. You just hit play and they play. Put them on a, on a layer above, on a track above the video below. That's all you have to do. And you can see they're all alphabetically organized here. And if you wanted, you could right click on them and copy them to a library. So if you're using libraries, it's easier to organize for you than, than move them or copy them to libraries. I do that for Video Revealed. I've got a specific one for all of my graphics. Let me just show you a couple of resizing things that are important here. This little Safe Margins button here, well, when you turn it on, it shows you the Safe Margin area. And the outside area is the action safe and the inside is the title safe. If you don't see that little button, you can click on the uh, button editor and you can drag it down. There it is right there. You can drag it uh, into your toolbar. So you can turn that on and off. And I've selected this graphic here. In your effects controls panel, you'll see all all of the objects that I use to create this. So you can see there's a, a group for the overlay. There's the, uh, which is the text and the shape. Then there's also the crawling text and the bar. If you look up to the top, you'll see vector motion. That setting only comes up when you have a Premiere Graphics object selected. It doesn't come up when you have video or the old titles, only Premiere Graphics. And if you twirl that down, you'll see position and scale. So if you wanted to move that up, you could drag this up and it still works perfectly. It pops out a little bit higher. Now, not all of them are wide. Um, a lot of them I made inside the title safe area. Um, you can also open up the crawling text. So I've got this placeholder text in here and you basically double click on that and select it and you start adding your own text. You won't see that until I 
go to the beginning, this, oop, this is my new text, and that scrolls along. Now in the creation uh, tutorial, I showed copying and pasting text. If this was a lot of text, I wouldn't be doing this here. I would be doing this outside in a text editing program with no carriage returns. But what you can do is you can change the duration of this. So two things are gonna affect the duration of this, and that is the duration of this here. So that's the actual title, and that's the duration of the, the text. So the beginning animation doesn't change. That still pops up. I'm gonna get rid of my title safe. And then the text comes out. And the further left you make this, the faster it is. Move it over to the right and it's going to be slower. One little thing I wanna show you that happens sometimes in the effects control panel when you change the duration of something on the timeline. And sometimes you can't see the, the keyframes. It's a little, it's a bug. Uh, and what you need to do, it's not happening right now, but if you don't see the keyframes and you know they're there, then you click in here and drag this, and sometimes it will just pop into view. And you might just be zoomed in too far here, but if you're zoomed out, you've got it selected, you can change this. Okay, now the last thing I'm gonna show you is if you have trimmed this clip tighter than that long keyframe, you won't see the keyframe and you can't select it. So right now at the end, that's we can see where that, that keyframe is. If I trim this back more, that keyframe is gone and I can't see it. I could see it if I went back to this and dragged it out. Oh, here it is. Oh, see that didn't show up there for a second. So that's how easy it is to, to work with them. I mean, most people are just gonna drop it in and, and copy and paste in new text and have that scroll. Uh, but if you need to tweak things, you can. Let's bring it into a 4K timeline. So here's breaking news large, drag that in. This is a 4K timeline and you can see everything works perfectly because the graphics scale and they're all vector graphics. Okay. Let me take you through each one of the tickers. I wanna show you what you just bought and, and how these work. Um, some are newsy, some are not. So this is live news large. So we've got the word live coming out here and the text comes out. Pretty standard. This one is the same, but with a different overlay. This, this graphic here has a little, it looks like a drop shadow on here, but it's not, it's a gradient. Here is a smaller one, same kind of idea, but smaller. So you could use this, you could uh, tuck this one underneath another title. You could even throw away the word live and the little red graphic here and just tuck this underneath or leave it on its own. Here's a very big one. This is one that, that looks more like um, a cable news show. This one's called Breaking News Large. Now this one is modeled right after cable news and it does have a specific feature. So this text here will resize and this text here will resize the graphics. Now here's one that I called military. It, it's it, like the previous one, but it has this graphic, this camo background. Let me just show you if I open this up in the effects controls, you can see every one of those shapes was hand drawn with the pen tool. Why did I go to so much trouble to do that? Because I didn't want outside dependencies on something like an Illustrator file or a ping, and I didn't want to have the overhead of an After Effects file. You can see how fast this plays back and it's infinitely scalable, that's why. So that's the military low, lower third and ticker. Here's a weather alert. And you can see this opens up with a little cloud and a lightning bolt very bright colors. Now, one thing I wanna show you is that when you are playing this back, let me just see if, if, if uh, we go to full screen. Okay, you see this outline here, and when I stop, you'll see the cloud looks better. Why does the cloud not look good while it's playing? Or why do the graphics, you see these graphics look, the type looks very chunky, and when I stop, it looks smooth. 
That's because by default, the high quality setting is turned off. That high quality setting you don't need, your export's going to be high quality. Adobe turns that off because it does require more computing power to play that. And I'll show you where that is. That's in the wrench menu in the program menu, high quality playback. And when you turn that on, everything will always look good. All the type will be clean anti-alias, the cloud will look good, everything is at its highest quality, but is it's of no use at all because it just makes your computer a lot slower. I suggest you never turn it on because you can accidentally leave it on, forget you have it on, and then wonder why Premiere Pro is so slow. Leave it off. Okay, uh, the next one. This is just a simple square wide. So this one, I just wanted a very, very simple um, two blue bars with the text coming under it. And by the way, all the text is using the uh, fonts from your Creative Cloud account. So when you load this, this each one of these, um, they will be activated automatically unless you've gone in and turned that off. And you can change these to any font you want. I chose fonts that I think uh, fit the style of these lower thirds, of these tickers. Okay, so this one, I like this. It, it comes up and kind of woo, wiggles around, woo. And this is, a slant. And what's interesting about this slant is you cannot use the horizontal scale on anything other than vertical. From a design point of view, if you have a slant and you scale it, it starts changing the slant and that looks like crap. Same with circles. You can't scale them without turning them into ellipses. So I hand keyframed many of these uh, properties. So you can see it's very simple, very clean. All right, let's look at the next one. Now we're getting into some of the stylistic designs. This one uses directional blur. Directional blur is a GPU accelerated effect. So if you have a GPU, it's gonna be accelerated. If you don't, it's gonna be a little bit slower. Again, your output is gonna look fine. So this one uses a couple of uh, bills and then the text is peeking out underneath it. Let me just. Go back and show you that again. Fades in and that comes out. All right, so this one is travel. And you can see a little jet comes up and then the text pops in underneath. Very simple, very clean. Now I'll, I'll turn on the uh, action safe, title safe area. And you can see this one does fit. I mean, the text itself now is in that title safe area. The tail of that just, sticks out a little bit, but I think we're going to be fine. A lot of these are now in the uh, title safe area. And here we've got one. This one's called Stars and Stripes and uh, pops out a couple of stars. Again, everything drawn inside Premiere Pro. Wild Wild West. I love this one. Look at that. The horns pop up and the type that has a, a certain look to it. Next one is industry. It's got this uh, old style, very clean graphic for uh, a factory look, very corporate. Next one is health and we got this apple that drops down and our ticker pops out. And if you want, you could just turn the apple parts off and just leave the graphic however you want. Okay, this one, this one I had fun with. This is my, uh, a hole in one and you watch, there's a little golf ball that comes flying over and it pops right into the uh, hole. Wee, boom. And you can see the design of the, the uh, graphic itself. It's got a three dimensional quality to it uh, and uh, I, I think it looks pretty darn good. All right, next, this one is very whimsical. Some hearts pop up and I've got a typeface that looks to me like it fits this kind of whimsical uh, look. Um, if you remember the way that, that girls would write in their uh, school books when they're younger, there's all this very flowery kind of look. Change that font if you want. I like it, it's whimsical. Okay, next one is communication. We've got two phones communicating with some a gradient on there. And you can see when this first thing pops up, it kind of wiggles around boom, 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 and then it connects, almost as if the two phones are making a connection. All right, next one, photography. 
pretty simple. Uh, DSLR camera comes up. And again, that was all drawn completely with the pen tool in uh, Premiere Pro. This one's interesting. It's a mouth. I, I'm using it with some cereal, but you could use it for a, a lot of different things. Kind of has a uh, Rolling Stones look. And here's a chat bubble. And this one is a little unique. You'll notice the rounded edges. I had to hand keyframe these round edges uh, as it was going out because again, the path could not um, just scale. So I had to animate that, that path and it was not easy. Okay, so that's the chat bubble. This one's interesting. There's a megaphone and you can see that there's some sound waves coming off of it, boop, 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 and then it comes out. And I did a skater, pops out and uh, slowly moves in with some rad kind of type. And what I like about this guy is not only does he make the ticker appear, but there's also that stripe on the top that appears. And again, I had to hand keyframe um, that a lot. Next up, something I call the Bauhaus design. And this has some shapes coming together in 3D or pseudo 3D and they pop together and have this very rigid look, a very Bauhaus kind of type. Next up is a, a globe, very useful for a lot of uh, corporate stuff. All of those uh, continents were all drawn with the pen tool in Premiere Pro. And I've got two Art Deco uh, versions here for you, uh, a light and a dark Art Deco. And they have this little top that pops up, the Art Deco type and Art Deco design. Something I called Candyland. And if you watch the way this pops up, it kind of wiggles into place and then opens up. Again, I had to hand keyframe uh, those shapes and you'll see the type coming out is around a mask. So I took the same shape and masked out the type itself so that it doesn't come in as a, just a vertical type. It's peeking in underneath that. And this one that I called Green Arrow for our superhero look here. You can see these hard edges on there. And the last one is just a simple, I call this orb wide, and this goes a little bit wider. So you can see there's an example of the not high quality. And as soon as I stop, you can see that. So the high quality just looks like that temporarily as it's playing back. And you can see that's just a very simple white uh, graphic. So that's all 30 uh, tickers or crawls that you just purchased. I hope you love them. I hope you have uh, fun with them. If you want to drop a link down in the comments of where you're using these, I'd love to have a look at them. Um, if, if you like these but want something different or want me to, to create more things, please let me know. Um, I go to great lengths to make these things and I'm just trying to figure out what, what people like. I like to keep things, I know there's a lot of Mogerts out there that are created using high-end After Effects stuff, but to me, and that's great, but now you, you're beholden to having After Effects and Dynamic Link and a lot of overhead. So for something like a freaking little news ticker, you don't need all of that overhead. Make it lean and clean and make it uh, work uh, perfectly. All right, there you go. There's your, your news ticker uh, how-to. Um, I hope you like it.